So there's an old saying, uh, before we get to the, the door slamming business, um, there's three sides to every story. There's his story, there's her story, and then there's the, the story in the middle. And it's really hard to get to that one in the middle, especially if you're not you know, present. But tell me what happened when you went to Alan Kasnoff's home to get his side. Right, this is my job, to be fair to all sides, get both sides of the story, and that's why I approached Alan Kasanoff's home. I wanted to see what life has been like for him. Unfortunately, he didn't want to speak to me. Uh, he slammed the door on me, he called the cops, and I think we have video that shows that. What I can report for you tonight is a new statement that we just received from his attorney, and it paints a vastly different picture than what's being reported online and that's circulating nationally. I'll read a portion of it to you. It says, Ms. Kasanoff has repeatedly taken steps to publish publicize the details of this custody dispute, generating a large following of individuals who believe her side of the story and advocate on her behalf without fully understanding all the facts of this case. While it is always difficult limiting a parent's access to their children, given the circumstances of this case, it was found to be in the best interest of the children to take these steps urgently. The children have been in our client's care for three and a half years, and they are safe and healthy. Attempts have been made by Ms. Kasanoff to hurt him personally and professionally, including a variety of absurd and baseless allegations and edited videos from more than four years ago to portray him in a bad light. Mr. Kasanoff continues to put his children first and their well-being is his primary concern. And I can report to you tonight, Ashley, that it is my understanding. I am told that those three daughters are still living there with Alan. And again, we are hearing that they are safe and healthy. Okay, so this is just all of it so upsetting, um, especially, you know, getting the confirmation today, which I believe you and your team uh, were able to, to get after weeks of mystery that uh, Catherine is indeed dead. It, it, she, she went ahead with the assisted suicide. So with these three innocent kids in the balance, um, where does the story stand now? Yeah, today was all about hearing more about Catherine's side as well. We tried to reach out to Alan yesterday. Today, we wanted to hear from people who knew Catherine. And I did that by speaking to one of her friends, also someone who's also going through the child custody and divorce proceedings here in Westchester County. Um, she told me all about sort of what it feels like, this uphill battle in the New York court system. Take a look. The way that I judge somebody's motherhood is by how hard they actually are able to put their pain aside and fight for their children. And I know Catherine did that to the death. We tried to get these stories out for years and nobody... <laughs> she kept saying to me in, in the months leading up to this, she says, Lizzie, nobody will care until somebody dies. It is an indescribable, bottomless pit of pain to have your children taken. So I think the better question is, how do people survive this, right? Like, how am I able to survive it? How was Catherine able to survive it for so long? And Ashley, if there's one thing I've taken away from reporting on this story is that I found out that there are so many mothers and fathers out there all across our nation that are going through a similar struggle. And so to the point of Elizabeth Weinstein, who you just heard from there, she says, just don't give up hope, uh, keep the faith and keep trying to do whatever you can uh, to have a life with your children if that is what you desire. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.